Here at Mystery History, we cover the unexplained areas of antiquity, either ignored, avoided, dismissed, or simply given an incomplete or often illogical historical lifeline of existence by mainstream academia, particularly those which we have covered of significant size, quarried from many miles away, now often immovable, and once transported, and either erected or placed atop one another seemingly effortlessly. We were, in a past series of investigations, looking into an interesting quarry within the Bazda cave system on the edge of Turkey, a place with particularly good granite and a proven source of stone for numerous megalithic sites many miles around. Later proven by us via the preserved linkages in tool marks to have been used by more than one group, as if they had coalesced at this particular site. Yet, as mentioned, we have long argued that not just one advanced civilization capable of moving and cutting these incredibly monumental megalithic stones, or indeed precisely cut them, have been and gone, and we feel we have and continue to provide sufficient proof of these claims. The Colossi of Memnon, said to have once sang at sunrise, are both made of stones thousands of tons in weight yet are eroding to dust along with countless others, yet clearly once precisely cut, just like all the other stone ruins we cover worldwide. Yet sites like Petra and the polygonal casing stones found in some most curious of places such as the pyramids of Egypt, preserving stones in a similar condition to the Colossi. Certain stone monuments of gigantic size, found and stored in near-perfect condition, are found in these same areas, as if somehow spared catastrophe. Does this prove a sudden great flood? They regardless, we claim, prove several cycles of activity at stone-cutting creation. Were some monuments submerged and therefore preserved under the sediments? like those secretly removed from the pyramids and sphinx during initial investigations? Did the ruins claimed as similarly dated not? Or were they attacked by a geological event? The perfect preservation of some of these statues must eliminate sandware as a possibility. The pursuit to the answers to these questions become closer, and we feel highly compelling.
There is a lot of mystery surrounding the continent of Antarctica. Officially the driest place on Earth, the ecosystems within the South Pole are untouched, and remain the healthiest anywhere, one of the main official reasons for the Antarctic Treaty. A cooperation of many of the world's nations to not pollute the area. The result of this treaty has been a ban of most human beings going there, unless crossing it on set cruise routes. If there are ancient ruins within this mysterious place, they will be buried under kilometers of ice, only the largest of which, would even show any evidence of their existence on the surface of the ice which encases them. These ruins may not even be classified as ruins, if they were flooded by a deluge, which in turn froze during pole shifts, they would be the most pristine ancient structures now left on earth, they may look as if they were abandoned yesterday. There are many strange reports from the region of Antarctica, usually attached to those not lucky enough to survive its elements, many researchers online claim to have found evidence of ruins and even pyramids within the South Pole. So, what I set out to do, was to attempt to find any evidence for a past colonization of Antarctica, and if our cover-up of these articles has ensued, to attempt to find any artifacts that were lucky enough to attain public exposure before their disappearance from the official records. It did not take me long to realize I was already aware of such an artifact. A map made in 1513, by Turkish Admiral Pyari Rees, created in accordance with ancient knowledge contained within manuscripts, which would later be lost during the destruction of the Library of Alexandria. Whether these fires which occurred over a duration of eight years, were orchestrated to steal these ancient books, or indeed to destroy them forever is unknown. But from this lost knowledge, the continent of Antarctica would be shown without ice. It was thought at the time that the manuscripts within the library were only a few centuries old at most, yet the evidence would suggest they were very much older than assumed. Which is a conclusion numerous researchers have made. The map has intrigued countless individuals, and like so many other things we encounter, in regards to ancient knowledge, the most important of relics become lost or destroyed. However, the map is a surviving remnant of this vast mountain of intellectual wealth, it is the smoldering amber of proof needed to confirm such knowledge has existed before, and that the shores of Antarctica were known well, in the very distant past. If the map displays the shorelines of Antarctica before it was covered with ice, and it is displayed more accurately than Brazil, then it is not a large leap of the imagination to suspect that ancient ruins, dating back to the time of this knowledge, do exist on the Antarctic continent. And while we have ancient pyramids, declared as existing on all continents of the planet, apart from Antarctica, you begin to doubt that Antarctica is an exception after all. It could be home to the largest, with the southern tip of the world encircled by the stars, it may hold the most amazing ruins on Earth. And with it being a place that only recently have we been able to explore extensively, you have to wonder what other artifacts may be preserved in the ice, what objects may have crashed in this desolate place, during the last few thousand years, just waiting to be reverse engineered. So how does such a smoking gun, such as the Pyre Rees map, survive for so long? While throughout the centuries all the source material has been engulfed with flames around it. Well, the coastline of Antarctica was not known to be displayed on the map, until we achieved the capability of developing ground penetrating technologies. It well and truly, slipped under the radar, 